Um, I think we're going to do a quick round of introductions just so we're aware of who's in the room. My name is Rose Judge. I work at VMware. I'm on the SPDX steering committee, and I've been working on the SPDX security profile. Uh, my name is uh, Adolfo Garcia. I am a software engineer with Jingard, and I'm a contributor to SPDX, but also maintain a bunch of other um, SDOM tools. Awesome. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a software engineer at Google. Uh, I help maintain the um, Golang 2 SPX library as well as uh, help with the build profile. And also, as long, uh, along with Adolfo, also helping build some tools around SBOMS and ecosystem. Hi, I'm Karen Bennett. Um, I'm representing uh, IEEE, uh, but I also work in building AI models um, for the last six years for self-driving cars. Uh, hello, I'm a Tom Sadler, software engineer at the BBC on uh, smart TV apps. Um, here to learn about SBDX. Hey there, um, David Buckhurst, also from the BBC. Um, so I guess me and Tom are the closest to an OSPO that that, that we have. So, uh, so yeah, um, but we're yeah looking to sort of give that more uh, more emphasis. So yeah, really interested in this. Morning all. I'm Steve Kilbain. I'm not at the BBC. Um, I work for Analog Devices. I'm mainly involved in Open Chain, and I'm here just to learn much more about SPDX and SPX3 in general. Okay. Hi, my name is Jordi, um, uh, and I'm the SPDX marketing manager. So uh, happy to elevate everyone's voice that, uh, from the ecosystem that is contributing or just want to learn more about SPDX. Hi, my name is Soin Kim. I am OSPO in AG Electronics, and I have many interested in SPDX. Hello, I'm Jeff Shapiro. I'm with Linux Foundation, and I do lots and lots of license scanning. <laughs> Oops. Let's go back this way. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Reffitt. I'm at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, I primarily work with the federal government, and I'm just interested. Well, they're rolling out SBOMs like crazy right now, so I'm learning about the uh, tooling ecosystem to help them do their jobs better. Hi, I'm Denver Gingrich, uh, Director of Compliance at Software Freedom Conservancy, and I'm curious to see how SPDX can help with compliance, um, and especially to see how we can make sure that some of the other parts of the uh, copyleft licenses uh, can be upheld through some of the, the work SPDX is doing. So um, collaboration there. Thanks. Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Matteo Solo. I'm part of the Reproducible Builds uh, community, especially working in Reproducible Builds in Debian. I'm here to learn more about SPDX and how it's evolving and if, if we can do something together, maybe, possibly. Hello, my name is Mark Giese. I'm with Wind River Systems. I'm head of the Open Source Program Office. Um, and I've been using SPDX since 2012. We've been delivering I guess, bombs to our customers since then, and I'm always interested in seeing how it's evolving. So. Uh, hello, I'm Tom Medford from Bloomberg, and I've apparently been nominated by a bunch of people who can raise their hands who are also from Bloomberg. Uh, we are a part of a group that help with our software supply chain efforts, uh, internally looking to how we can leverage SPDX more and also contribute back. Uh, hello, I'm Kevin Connor. Uh, was with Red Hat. I'm now unfortunately unemployed, so I'm here as an independent. Uh, I've done a fair bit of work with Cyclone DX and S bombs. Uh, now here to learn about SPDX and strengthen my knowledge of that. So thanks very much. I'm also from here in Vancouver. I just live on the North Shore, so I enjoy the scenery every day. Yeah, yeah that'll be great. Um, Hi, everybody. I'm Vineet Aguirre. Um, uh, I'm Sam. Uh, I'm Chandan. Hi, I'm Akshay. Lisa. So we all work in different teams at Bloomberg. It's not one team that <laughs> showed up. Yeah. I also work at Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Nisha. Uh, I work for Oracle. I. Uh, have been a contributor to SPDX for a while now, 
and uh, also a maintainer with Rose and Adolfo and Brandon. <laughs> so, I. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I am Norio Kobota from, uh, I am um, uh, OSPO staff in Sony Group Corporation and uh, I'm participating in uh, Open Chain Japan Working Group and uh, contributed to uh, op uh, SPDX Lite or next, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot, Us usage profile, <laughs> usage profile to uh, SPDX version 3.0. Nice to meet you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm Takashi Ninjoji from Tsushiba. I'm the uh, head of the open source program office. And uh, <laughs> I'm also uh, working with uh, SPDX, SP6 Lite from the uh, Open Chain Japan World Groups. So I'm really happy to join this discussion. Thank you. Hi. <coughs> Hi, my name is Daisuke Morishita from Japan. I am working for a company named Hita Solutions and I'm working for open source management. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Tomas Akashi. Uh, I'm, I'm a software developer in uh, Hitachi Solutions. And I, uh, I'm usually working in the most and, uh, the IOE, and, and, and I publish at Elita uh, 4 s for related to uh, s SPDX. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Ayumi Watanabe. I'm working for Hitachi Solutions Japan and I am a ID consultant and who is uh, uh, helping Japanese cost companies to use and understand open open source uh, compliance and uh, open um, uh, open source management and especially for uh, SPDX. So thank you very much. Nice to meet you everyone. Hi, my name is Dan. I'm an open source uh, maintainer and developer on a number of different projects. And uh, we've just recently implemented the SPDX um, uh, source code tags on one of our projects and with some outside prompting. So I'm here to learn a little bit more about what we can do to help uh, downstream users. Hi, my name is Alex Wright. I'm with the United States Air Force. And I'm here to learn about the next upcoming standard of SPDX. and. Um, uh, furthering our SBOM efforts. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Kate Stewart, and I've been pretty much with SPDX since the start of it. Um, and so we're here to sort of talk about what's coming down the pipe and um, get your input and hopefully help get the tools. So with that, I'll move it over to Rose. And Okay, so just a quick agenda so you all know what to expect. Um, Kate's going to give us an SPDX 3.0 overview, um, and then Steve and Jeff are going to give us um, an overview of the license compliance use cases with SPDX 3.0. Um, Adolfo and I are going to go over security use cases for SPDX 3.0. And then Karen and Gopi, or maybe just Karen, I'm not sure, um, are going to go over how to utilize SPDX for AI use cases. Um, <clears throat> Brandon, maybe Nisha too, okay, are going to um, cover the build profile for us. And then Gary, who is arriving shortly, is going to wrap it all up by kind of summarizing the differences between 2.x and 3.0. At 10.30, we're going to have a group photo, um, and then we'll let discussion follow after that. So um, possible discussion topics are the transition paths for tools, and um, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, um, please uh, bring those up, and we'll, we'd love to discuss those. So I'm going to turn it over to Kate. Yep, thanks. And if people have a... Oops. Thanks. And if people have topics that they want to see, um, you know, please write them down. Also, uh, we're trying to collect, so those who are watching this remotely, um, we have a Gitter room. And if you want to basically put your questions in the Gitter room, someone in here will be keeping an eye, probably me, will be keeping an eye on it. And then I'll raise them on your behalf so that we can have a little bit of interactivity. Not a lot, but at least a little bit. And so, like I say, there is the app, Gitter M, and then the lobby. Hopefully you can catch that. We'll bring it back up again later. So with that, talking about 3.0 and where we're going with it. 
So why are we doing 3.0? Well, there's been a lot of interest in using SPDX for non-licensing scenarios. That being said, we want to make sure we are coherent and stay you know, true to being able to support all the licensing scenarios. So, but getting the security and some of the needs for safety critical systems um, able to be represented was one of the motivators. Also, we're seeing a tremendous surge in AI. In fact, we started working on this over a year ago, if not lo longer, and um, on data sets and how we can get the transparency for those. Because the similarly, as you compile and build an application, you're creating your um, trained models, and the information there could have vulnerabilities, could have licensing issues, all of these things that SPDX is good at representing. So we want to be able to extend the model for that. And um, there was efforts going on for doing work on SBOMs at the OMG CISC efforts. And so I guess about two years ago, we combined forces with them to make sure what we were coming up with was going to work for both communities. So not yet another SBOM. We actually tried to very adjust on the SPDX side as well as on the OMG side. So we had something that would work for both groups. The OMG CISC efforts were very much focused on data lakes and moving um, so that they could represent the information in a data lake and query it. Um, and so this is part of the main direction we've been going for. And then, you know, there's a lot of, the other piece of critique we've heard um, through the years is, um, oh, it's too complicated. I don't want to carry the licensing information. I just want the straight SBOM stuff. I just want a component and a thing. Well, you could do that today. However, making it very crisp and simple to see was part of it. So making that the minimum easy to just basically access and use was a, a motivator here on what we've been working on. And then being able to include the profiles you care about, like licensing, um, like security, like the AI and ML, the assets build usage. These are scenarios that people have brought to us, use cases people have brought to us and that we're trying to basically make sure we can support. So just to give you guys a bit of a history, um, we've been around for quite a while, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> one of the big transitions was between 1.2 and 2.0. So we've gone through a breaking change before as a community. And there we basically went to a, enable a, an arbitrary hierarchy and the documents and so forth. And so that was one of those shifts. So some of the things that we've <laughs> learned from that lesson, we're trying to make sure we apply this time around as we're going into um, 3.0. Um, we basically added the SPDX light again, thinking that people just wanted to have the minimum set at one point in time. Um, that got added in, and then we took that to ISO. So SPDX is an international standard and has been recognized as such and has gone through the extra level of scrutiny to make sure we could actually do that. We will be taking the 3.0 work after it matures a bit in the field back to ISO as well. Okay. Um, but we have to basically, because there's so much. Um, so many new use cases, so much thing. We, we want a little bit of experience to make sure we've got it right. So it'll either be 3.0 or 3.1 we take to it, but we want to be, uh, do a little bit of bake-in in practice with the tools and everything else before we go. However, we will be releasing the 3.0 um, spec, etc. this year. The 3.0 model release candidate is out now as of last weekend. So if you want to get a feel for what's happening with SPDX, now that you can look at that model and understand the classes, the properties, the vocabulary is how this is all fitting together. And so <clears throat> just to sort of talk a bit about it, um, literally we went from a 1.2 where it was just one package per um, document effectively to allowing multiple packages per document and having an arbitrary hierarchy. And that was a significant change for us at the time. Um, you know, other systems that are out there right now for SBOMs are sort of talking in this type of mode. <laughs> um, and in terms of like one package per thing, it's only one thing and that's just the dependencies. And so we learned from our communities that we need to be able to have multiple scenarios. Um, we also initially had it in a Google, um, a Google Docs effectively and Word Docs was how we wrote our spec initially. And then we would generate a model underneath from that. Um, we moved out over to being in Markdown up on GitHub so we had much more closer tracking of it. And so that happened in the 2.1 to 2.2 release, I think, actually. Um, and then from that is what we went to ISO with, with the 221. Oops, let me go back. And now, and now we're here in the 3L with that release candidate model. And we are working towards, um, the next step right now is we're gonna be serializing it 
and getting serializations out from the model so that people can sort of see the files and so forth. There's a lot of examples right now already in play and there'll be more showing up. Um, and then the specification will be available. So before we used to do the specification, then put the model, we've changed the order right now. We're having the model out there and then the specification will be generated in a more readable fashion. So uh, this, at this point in time, it's very much oriented towards tools, people working on tools, because these schemas will be there and you should be able to build from that. And then eventually we'll try to go um, for ISO submission after we get that. But that's the flow we're aiming towards right now. So um, the specification, as you say, is being transformed. It used to be straight text. It's now being in markdown. And we're also having the classes, properties, and enumerations of vocabularies. The metadata is there for each element. And we'll be basically um, automatically generating schemas now. So there's a preliminary JSON schema sitting there. And we've been working on the Python tools as we've been sort of finalizing this stuff. So there will be a Python library out there for people to play with in the next week or two, um, at least to start playing with anyhow. And then we'll be adding more of the formats generation after that. And see these profiles, the way to work with them is if you care about them, you indicate you want to use it. And there are certain things that are mandatory and things that are optional, and those properties are available to you. All the properties that are in SPDX are available to you, but there are certain ones that the schemas would automatically check if you've indicated you want to be following a profile. And so there's the link to the model, uh, and that's what we to want to focus people at and focus people at making things more interesting. But issues and pull requests right now are very much welcome as we try to get this hardened. So just to sort of, you know, what we sort of did is we found, with 2x, we found the Fulmer model, really helped us enable the transition between formats. We're using the same thing. That's why we're doing the model approach. And with 3.0, we're basically looking at having the same sort of thing between the formats, but we're adding in support for data lakes and in addition to SBOM documents and format. So there's different types of SBOMs. They're included here. So some of you um, may have seen that CISA published, that CISA of the US published this um, set of types of SBOMs, which is where this type of information is available. Um, the licensing people have historically have focused mostly on the source SBOMs. The security people <coughs> have focused on the, <coughs> sorry about that, just getting over a cold. Security people have focused mostly on the build as bombs. So if you have a security people talking about S bombs, they're usually thinking build. If you have so uh, licensing people and OSPOs thinking S bombs, they're mostly talking source. And so we needed a way of basically se separating these use cases out. <coughs> and so there was an industry group that got together, CISA helped convene us. And we wordsmiths for six months on these definitions. Um, and so we've got some degree of consensus. And all the people who have signed off on these definitions are a pretty wide swath of the industry. So you can go to that link at the bottom in the slides. And, or just go into CISA SBOM um, site, and then you'll find the reference to this. It came out on the 21st of last month along with a VEX document, too, which I'm sure Adolfo will <laughs> reference at some point. Um, but build and source are really what's out there today. Design is going to be really useful for uh, safety and requirements, requirements catching, things like that. Um, there's work going on there. Deployed is once you've actually configured something and putting it on a system, recording it, and understanding what you've put on a system and recording it as it's in progress. Now, each of these types of SBOMs can refer back to others in there. Okay, I think that's important to understand. An SBOM isn't just one in everything. We learned that lesson before. And we've got various clean mechanisms for linking from one type of SBOM to another type of SBOM to refer to the information. So you can generate the information where it is locally. Um, and these, most are around life cycle. However, historically, someone may take a, I've got this binary, I want to try to understand what's in it, and you may need an analyzed one. But we see this merging pretty much 
through the ecosystem. So I just wanted you to be aware of this because you'll start to see people talking about it. And it sort of maps pretty well to a software life cycle in that your design is happening when you're doing your planning. Your source S-bombs usually are happening on procurement and development. Your build S-bombs are your build test and release. That's when they're generated. Because that's where the information is, at the heart of it. That's where you actually have facts as opposed to guesses. And the more time in this ecosystem we can record facts rather than guesses, the more we're going to be able to trust these documents to be useful in the system. And then, OK, hey, you've got your release. You've got your release. Oh, I'm, you should give it to a customer. Hey, they're going to deploy it. Um, well, record how they were going to deploy it. That's effectively a deployed SBOM. We don't see a lot of that today. I think we're going to see more and more of that. And certainly from the safety side, we're going to need it. And then, oh, hey, I've got this system. It's been changing out from underneath me over time. I want to look and see what's actually showing up. So this guy may be called an instrumented SBOM or something like that, but it's a way of summarizing what is actually running on a system and being able to compare it to what you think it should be running on the system with the deployed. So a deployed SBOM could refer, well actually a runtime SBOM could refer to a couple deployed, the deployed S could refer to a build, the build could refer to the source. And the design could sort of basically be pointing at all of them. So there's going to be some interesting new use cases being shown up by this. But this is a pretty powerful mechanism and it will let us represent these safety use cases we're trying to aim for. <laughs>